For centuries, we've been captivated by the concept of machines doing the job of humans. And over the past decade or so, we really focused on AI and the possibility of intelligent machines that can perform cognitive tasks. Now in the past few years with the popularity of machine learning models, ranging from recent chat GPT to BERT, we're starting to see how AI is changing the way we interact with the world. How is AI transforming the way we do business and what does the future hold for us there? At theCUBE, we've covered Oracle's AI and ML strategy for years, which has really been used to drive automation into Oracle's autonomous database. Uh, we've talked a lot about MySQL Heatwave in database machine learning, and AI pushed into Oracle's business apps. You know, Oracle you know, intends to lead in AI, but not competing as a di direct AI player per se, but rather embedding AI and machine learning into its portfolio to enhance its existing products and bring new services and offerings to the market. Now last October at Cloud World in Las Vegas, Oracle partnered with NVIDIA, which is the go-to AI silicon provider for vendors, and they announced a, an investment, a pretty significant investment to deploy tens of thousands more NVIDIA GPUs to OCI, the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and build out Oracle's infrastructure for enterprise scale AI. Now, Oracle CEO Safra Katz said something to the effect of this alliance is going to help customers across industries from healthcare, manufacturing, telecoms, and financial services to overcome the multitude of challenges they face. Presumably she was talking about just driving more automation and more productivity. Now, to learn more about Oracle's plans for AI, we'd like to welcome in Elad Ziklik, who's the Vice President of AI Services at Oracle. Elad, great to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So first, let's talk about Oracle's path to AI. I mean, it's the hottest topic going. For years, you've been incorporating machine learning into your products and services. You know, can you tell us what you've been working on, how you got here? So it's a, it's a great question. So as you mentioned, I think most of the original flow into AI was on, on embedding AI and using AI to uh, make our applications and databases better. So uh, inside MySQL Heatwave, inside, uh, inside our autonomous database. Uh, in parallel, we've been driving AI all across our SaaS apps. So Fusion, our large enterprise business suite for HR applications and CRM and ERP and, and whatnot, uh, has built in AI inside it. Uh, most recently, NetSuite, our small medium business SaaS suite, started using AI for things like automated, automated invoice processing and, and whatnot. And most recently over the last, I would say uh, two years, we've started exposing and bringing these capabilities into the broader OCI, Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So the developers and, and ISVs and customers can start using our AI capabilities to make their apps better and their experiences and business workflow better and not just consume these as embedded inside, uh, inside Oracle. Uh, and this uh, recent uh, partnership that you mentioned with, uh, with NVIDIA is another step in bringing the best AI infrastructure capabilities into this platform so you can actually build any type of machine learning workflow or, or AI model that you want on Oracle Cloud. So when I look at the market, I, I see companies out there like Data Robot or C3 AI, and there's, there's you know maybe a half dozen that sort of pop up on, on on my radar anyway. And my premise has always been that most customers they don't want to become AI experts; they just want to they want to buy applications and have AI you know embedded, or mm -hmm. they want AI to manage their infrastructure. So my my question to you is: How does Oracle help its OCI customers? support their business with, with AI? So it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. So I think what most customers want is um, business AI. They want AI that works for their business. They want AI that works for their enterprise. I call it the, the, the last mile of AI. And, and they want this thing to work. The majority of them don't want to hire a large and expensive data science teams to go and build everything from scratch. They just want the, the, the business problem solved by applying AI to it. Okay, my, my best analogy is, um, is Lego. So if you think of Lego, Lego has these millions Lego blocks that you can use to build anything that you want. But the majority of people like me or like my kids, they want the Lego Death Star kit or the Lego Eiffel Tower thing. They want a thing that uh, 
that just works. It is very easy to use. And still Lego blocks, you still need to build some things together, but it just works for the scenario that you're looking for. So, so that's our focus. Our focus is making it easy for customers to apply AI where they need to uh, in the right business context. So whether it's uh, embedding it inside the business applications, like adding forecasting capabilities to your supply chain management or financial uh, or financial planning software, whether it's adding chatbots into, into the line of business applications, integrating these things into your analytics uh, dashboard, even all the way to we have a new, a new platform piece we call ML applications that allows you to take a machine learning model and scale it for the thousands of tenants that you would need. Because this is, this is a big problem for most of the ML use cases. It's very easy to build something for a proof of concept or a pilot or a demo. But then if you need to take this and then deploy it across your thousands of customers or your thousands of regions or, or, or facilities, then it becomes messy. So this is where we spend our time, making it easy to take these things into production in the context of your business application or your business use case that you're interested in right now. So, so you mentioned chatbots, and I want to talk about chat GPT, but my question here is, is different. We'll talk about that in a minute. So when you think about these chatbots, the, the ones that are conversational, my experience anyway, is they're just meh, they're not that great. But the ones that actually work pretty well, they have a conditioned response. Now they're limited, but they say, which of the following is your problem? And then if that's one of the following is your problem, you can maybe solve your problem, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. But so, but, but this is clearly a trend and it helps, you know, the line of business. How does Oracle think about the, these use cases for your customers? Yeah, so, so I think the key here is exactly what you said. It's about uh, task completion, okay? The, the, the general purpose bots uh, are, are interesting, but as you said, like are, are, still, uh, are still limited. They're getting much better, and I'm sure we'll talk about ChatGPT. But I think what, what most enterprises want is, is around task completion. I want to automate my expense report processing. So today inside Oracle, we have a chatbot where I submit my expenses they ask, the bot asks a couple of questions, I answer them and then I'm done. Like I don't need to go to our fancy uh, application and manually submit an expense report. I do this via, via, via Slack. And, and the key is around managing the right expectations of what this thing uh, uh, is capable of doing. Like I, I, I have a story from I think five, six years ago when the technology was, was much inferior than it is today. Where one of the telco providers I was working with um, wanted to roll a chatbot that does real-time translation. Uh, so it was for a support center, uh, for one of the call centers. And uh, what they want to do is, hey, we have English speaking employees 24 seven. If somebody's calling with, uh, uh, and, and their native tongue is different, I'm like Hebrew in, in my case, or Chinese or whatnot, then we give them, uh, we give them a chatbot that they will interact with and will uh, translate this on the fly and, and everything would work. And when they rolled it out, the, the, the feedback from customers was horrendous. Uh, customers said the technology sucks, it's not good, I, I, I hate it, I hate your company, I hate your support. Uh, and and what, they, what they've done is they've changed the narrative. Instead of you go to a support center and you assume you're going to talk to a human and instead you get a crappy chatbot, they're like, hey, if you want to talk to a Hebrew speaking person, uh, there's a four hour wait, please leave your phone and we'll call, call you back. Or you can try our new amazing Hebrew speaking uh, AI powered bot uh, and it may help your use case. Do you want to try it out? And some people said, yeah, let's try it out. Plus one to, to try it out. And the feedback, even though it was the exact same technology, was amazing. People were like, oh my God, this is so innovative. This is great. Even though it was the exact same experience that they hated uh, a few weeks earlier on. So I think the, the key lesson that I picked from this experience is it's all about setting the right expectations and working around the right use case. Uh, if you are replacing a human, the level uh, is different than if you are just helping or augmenting something that otherwise would take a lot of time. And I think this is the focus that, that we're doing. Picking up the tasks that people want to accomplish or that enterprises want to accomplish for the customers, for the employees, and using chatbots to make those specific ones better rather than, hey, this is going to replace all humans everywhere and, and just be better than that. Yeah, I mean, to the point, you mentioned expense reports. I'm in a Twitter thread and one guy says, my favorite part of business travel is filling out expense reports. It's an hour of excitement to figure out which receipts won't scan, right? We can all, we can all relate to that, this is the worst. So yeah. um, for, for, when you think about companies that are building custom AI driven apps, what 
can they do on OCI? What are the best options for them? Do they need to hire an army of, 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 of machine intelligence experts and AI specialists? Help us understand your, your point of view yeah. there. So, so over the last, uh, I would say, the two or three years we've developed a full suite of machine learning and AI services for, I would say, cover pretty much every use case that you would expect right now, from uh, applying natural language processing to understanding uh, uh, customer support tickets or social media or, or, or whatnot, to computer vision uh, platforms or computer vision services that can understand and detect objects and uh, and count objects on shelves or, or detect cracks in, in, in a pipe or defecting parts, all the way to speech services that can actually uh, transcribe uh, human uh, human speech. And more, most recently, we've launched a new document AI service that can actually look at unstructured documents like receipts or invoices or government IDs or even proprietary documents, uh, loan application, uh, student uh, uh, student application forms, uh, 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 patient uh, patient ingestion and whatnot, and completely automate them using uh, using AI. So if you want to do one of the things that are, are I would say common bread and butter for any industry, whether it's financial services or, or healthcare or manufacturing, we have a suite of services that any developer can go and use, easily customize with their own data. You don't need to be an expert in, in, in deep learning or large language models. You can just use our AutoML capabilities and, and build your own version of the models. Just go ahead and use them. And if you do have proprietary complex scenarios that you need custom ML from scratch, we actually have the most cost-effective platform uh, for that. So we have the OCI data science, as well as built-in machine learning platform inside the databases, inside Oracle database and MySQL Heatwave, that allow data scientists, Python wielding people that actually like to, to, to build and tweak and control and improve, have everything that they need to go and build their machine learning models from scratch, deploy them, monitor and manage them at scale in, in production environment. And, and most of it is brand new, so we did not have these technologies four or five years ago, and we've uh, started building them and they're now at, at enterprise uh, enterprise scale over the last couple of years. So what are some of the state-of-the-art tools that AI specialists and, and data scientists need if they're going to go out and develop uh, these new models? So, so I think it's, it's on three layers. I think there's an infrastructure layer where the NVIDIAs of the world come into play. You, for some of these things, you want massively efficient, massively scaled, uh, um, um, uh, infrastructure place. So we are the most uh, cost-effective and performant uh, um, large-scale GPU training environment today. Uh, we're going to onboard, we're going to be the first cloud that onboards the new NVIDIA H100. These are the new super powerful uh, GPUs for large language model training. So we have that covered for you in case you need this because you want to build these ginormous things. Uh, you need a data science platform, uh, a platform where you can open a Python notebook and, and just use all these fancy open source frameworks and create the models that you want and then click on a button and deploy it and it infinitely scales wherever, wherever you need it. And in many cases, you just need the, what I call the applied AI services. You need the, the, the Lego sets, the Lego Death Star, Lego Eiffel Tower. So we have a suite of these sets. For, for, for typical scenarios, whether it's cognitive services of like, again, understanding images or, or documents, all the way to solving particular business problems. So an anomaly detection service, uh, a demand forecasting service, that would be the equivalent of these Lego sets. So if this is the business problem that you're looking to solve, we have services out there where you can bring your data, call an API, train a model, get the model and use it in, in your production environment. Uh, so, Wherever you, wherever you want to play, all the way into embedding this thing inside some applications, obviously, wherever you want to play, we have the, the, the tools for you to go and uh, to go and engage from infrastructure to SaaS at the top and everything in the middle. So when you think about uh, the, the data pipeline, the data life cycle and the specialized roles that came out of kind of the, the Hadoop era, if you will, I want to focus on two, developers and data scientists. So the developers, they hate dealing with infrastructure and they got to deal with the infrastructure. Now they're being asked to secure the infrastructure. They just want to write code. And the data scientists, you know, they, they're spending all their time trying to figure out, okay, what's the data quality and they're wrangling data and they don't spend enough time doing you know, what they want to do. So, so there's been a lack of collaboration. Have you seen that change? Are, are, are these approaches allowing collaboration between data sciences uh, data scientists yeah. and developers yeah. on a single platform. Can you talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, th that is a great question. What, one of the biggest uh, set of scars that I have on my back from, from, from building these platforms and, and in other companies is, is exactly that. Uh, every persona had a set of tools and, uh, and these tools didn't talk to each other and the handoff was painful and uh, most of the machine learning things evaporate or, or, or die uh, on the floor uh, because of this problem. It's very rarely that they are unsuccessful because the algorithm wasn't good enough. In most cases, it's somebody builds something and then you can't take it to production. You can't integrate it into your, your, your business application. You can't take the data out, train, create an endpoint and integrate it back like it's too painful. So, so the way we are approaching this is focused on this problem exactly. We have a single set of tools that if you publish a model as a data scientist, then developers and even business analysts that are seeing inside a business application could be able to consume it. We have a single model store, a single feature store, a single management experience across the various personas that need to play in this. And we spend a lot of time building, and I'm borrowing a word that uh, several folks used and, uh, and I really liked it, building insight highways to make it easier to bring these insights into where you need them inside the applications, both inside our applications, inside our SaaS applications, but also inside custom third party and even first party applications. And, and this is where a lot of our focus goes to just because we have dealt with so much pain doing this inside our own SaaS that we now have built the tools and we're making them available for others to make this process of building a machine learning outcome driven insight in your app easier. And it's not just the model development and it's not just the deployment, it's the entire journey of taking the data, building the model, training, training it, deploying it, looking at the real data that comes from the app and creating this feedback loop in a, in a, in a more efficient way. And that's our focus area, exactly this problem. Oh, thank you for that. So, you know, last week we had our SuperCloud 2 event and I had um, Juan Loiza on and he spent a lot of time talking about how open Oracle is in its philosophy. And I got a lot of feedback. They were like, Oracle, open, I don't really think. But, yeah. but the truth is, if you think about the database, Oracle database, it never met a hardware platform that it didn't like. So in that sense, yeah. it's open. So but my point is a big part of, of machine learning and AI is, is driven by open source tools, frameworks. What's your open source strategy? What, what do you support from an open source standpoint? So, so I, I'm a strong believer that uh, you don't actually know, nobody knows where the next leapfrog or the next uh, uh, industry shifting innovation in AI is going to come from. If you look six months ago, nobody foreseen DALI, the, the magical text to image generation and the explosion that it brought into, into just art and design type of experiences. If you look six weeks ago, I don't think anybody's seen uh, ChatGPT and what it can do for a whole bunch of a whole bunch of industries. So, so to me, assuming that uh, a customer or partner or a developer would want to lock themselves into only the tools that a specific vendor can produce is is ridiculous. Because because nobody knows. If anybody claims that they know where the innovation is going to come from in a year or two, let alone five or ten, they're they're just wrong or or, or lying. So my strategy, our strategy for Oracle is to, um, I call this the Netflix of AI. Okay. So if you think about Netflix, then uh, they've produced a bunch of high quality shows on their own. Uh, a few years ago, it was House of Cards. House of Cards, uh, uh, last month, my wife and I binge watched uh, Ginny and Georgie. Uh, but they also curated a lot of shows that they found around the world um, and brought them to their customers. So it started with things like Seinfeld or Friends, and most recently, it was uh, Squid Games, and there's a famous Israeli uh, TV series called Fauda that Netflix uh, Netflix bought in, and they bought in as is, and they gave it the, the Netflix value. So you have captioning, and you have the ability to speed the movie, and you have it inside your app, and you can download it and watch it offline and everything. But nobody in Netflix was involved in the production of these first seasons. Now, if these things hunt and they are great, then the third season or the fourth season will get the full Netflix production value high value budget, uh, high value location feuding or whatever. But you as a customer, you don't care whether the producer and director and screenplay writing is, is a Netflix employee or with somebody else's employee. It is, it is uh, fulfilled by Netflix. I believe that we will become, or we are looking to become the Netflix of AI. Okay? I, we are building a bunch of AI in a bunch of places where we think it's important and we have some competitive advantage like 
healthcare with a similar partnership or whatnot. But I want to bring the best AI software and hardware to OCI and do a fulfillment by Oracle on that. So you'll get the Oracle security and identity and single bill and everything you'd expect from, from a company like Oracle. But we don't have to be building the data science and the models for everything. So this means both open source, we recently announced a, a partnership with Anaconda, the leading provider of, of Python distribution in the data science ecosystem, uh, where we are, are doing a joint strategic partnership of bringing all the goodness into, uh, into Oracle customers, as well as in the process of doing the same with NVIDIA and all those software libraries, not just the hub, both for ML stuff like Triton, and, um, uh, but also for healthcare specific stuff, as well as other ISVs, other AI leading ISVs, that uh, that we are in the process of partnering with to get their stuff into, into OCI and into Oracle so that you can truly consume the best AI hardware and the best AI software in the world on Oracle because that is what, what I believe our customers would want. The ability to choose from any open source engine and honestly from any ISV type of, of, of solution that is AI powered and they want to use it in their experiences. So you mentioned ChatGPT. I want to talk about some of the innovations that are coming. As an AI expert, you, saw, you see ChatGPT. Um, on the one hand, I'm sure you weren't surprised. On the other hand, maybe the, the, the reaction in the market and the hype uh, is somewhat surprising. You know, they say uh, that, that we tend to under or overhype things in the early stages and underhype them long-term. You kind of use the internet as an example. What's your take on, on that premise? So, so, I think that this type of technology is going to be an inflection point in how um, software is being developed. Okay. Um, I, I truly believe this. I think uh, this is an internet style uh, moment and, and the way software interfaces and software applications are, are, are being developed will dramatically change over the next year, two or three because of this type of technologies. I think there will be industries that will be shifted. Okay. I think education is a good example. Uh, I, I saw this thing opened on my son's um, on my son's laptop. Um, so, so I think education is going to be transformed. Uh, uh, design industry, like images or whatever, has already been transformed. But I think that for mass adoption, like beyond the beyond the hype, um, beyond the peak of inflected expectations, if I'm using Gartner terminology, uh, I think certain things need to go and uh, need to go and happen. One is this thing needs to become more reliable. So right now it is a complete black box that sometimes produce magic and sometimes produce uh, uh, just nonsense. And it needs to have better explainability and better uh, lineage to how did you get to this answer? Because I think enterprises are going to really care about, uh, uh, about the things that they surface with their customers or use internally. So I think that is one thing that's going to come out. And the other thing that's going to come out is I think it's going to come uh, industry-specific large language models or industry-specific chat GPTs. Sort of like how OpenAI did co-pilot for, for, for writing code. I think we will start seeing this type of apps solving for specific business problems, uh, understanding contracts, um, understanding healthcare, writing doctor's notes uh, on, on behalf of doctors so they don't have to spend time manually, uh, manually recording and, and analyzing conversations. And I think that would become the, 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 the sweet spot of, of this thing. There will be companies, whether it's OpenAI or Microsoft or Google or hopefully Oracle, that will use this type of technology to solve for specific, uh, specific very high value, uh, very high value business needs. And I think this will change how interfaces happen. So going back to your expense report, the world of I'm going to go into an app and I'm going to click on seven buttons uh, in order to get some job done, like. This, this world is gone. Like uh, I'm going to say, hey, uh, uh, please do this and that, and I expect an answer to, to come out. I've seen a recent demo about um, uh, marketing and sales. So a customer sends an email that is interested in something, and then a chat GPT powered thing just produces the answer. I think this is how the world is going uh, is gonna to evolve. Like, yes, there's a ton of hype. Yes, it's, it looks like magic, and right now it is, it is magic, but it's not yet productive for most enterprise scenarios. But in the next 6, 12, 24 months, uh, this will start getting more dependable and, uh, and, and it's going to change how these industries are, 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 being, uh, are being managed. Like I, I, 
I think it's an internet level revolution. That's my, yeah. my Inter idea. Very interesting. And it's going to change the way in which we have, instead of act, uh, accessing the data center through APIs, we're going to access it through natural language processing. And that opens up technology to a huge audience. Uh, last question is a two part question. And the first part is what you guys are working on from the futures. But, but the second part of the question is, you know, we got data scientists and developers in our audience. They love the, the new shiny toy. So give us a, a, a little glimpse of what you're working on in the future. And what would you say to them to persuade them to check out Oracle's AI services? Yep. So I think there's two, two main things that we're doing. One is around healthcare. Okay, with a new, recently new Sonar acquisition, uh, we are spending a significant effort around revolutionizing healthcare with AI across many, many scenarios from patient care um, using computer vision and cameras to automating and making better uh, insurance claims uh, to research and pharma. We are uh, making the best models uh, from leading organizations and internal available for hospitals and researchers and insurance providers everywhere. Uh, and we truly are looking to become the, the, the leader in AI for healthcare. So I think that's a huge focus area. And the second part is, again, going back to the enterprise AI angle. Like we want to, if you have a business problem that you want to apply AI to solve, we want to be your platform. Like you could use others if you want to build everything complicated and, and whatnot. We have a platform for that as well. But like if you want to apply AI to solve a business problem, we want to be your platform. Okay? We want to be the, again, the, the Netflix of AI kind of a thing where we are the place for the greatest AI innovations accessible to any developer, any business analyst, any user, any data scientist on Oracle Cloud. And uh, we're making a significant effort on, on these two fronts, as well as developing a lot of the missing pieces and, uh, and building blocks that we see are needed in this space uh, to, to make it truly like a great experience for, for developers and data scientists. And what would I recommend? Like, get started, try it out. Like the, we actually have a, a, a shameless sales plug here. We have a free tier for all of our AI services, so it literally costs you nothing. Uh, I would highly recommend to just go and, and try these things out. Go play with it. Uh, if you're a Python wielding de developer and you want to try a little bit of AutoML, go, go down that path. Uh, if you're not even there and you're just like, hey, I have these uh, customer feedback things and I want to try out if I can understand them and apply AI and visualize and do some cool stuff, we have services for that. My recommendation is, and, and I think ChatGPT got us because I see people that have nothing to do with AI and, and can't even spell AI going and try it out. I think this is the time. Go play with these things, go play with these technologies and find what AI can do to you or for you. And, uh, and I think Oracle is a great place to start uh, playing with these things. Elad, thank you. Appreciate you sharing your vision of uh, making Oracle the Netflix of AI. I love that and uh, really appreciate your time. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, thanks for watching this. Cube Conversation, this is Dave Vellante. We'll see you next time.